did not know that. John Wayne, a top 10 star, 40 years after his death? What you are seeing is the past. These are some of the most popular film stars of all time and from not really that long ago. But then we come to this guy, John Wayne. By the early 1970s, many of his contemporaries were either dead, retired, or attempting a TV series. While Wayne was still a top box office draw, John Wayne died June 11, 1979. But here's where it gets a little bit puzzling. In 1994, the Harris Poll began asking people who their favorite movie star was. The top 10 names of people you would expect to see there were there, like Mel Gibson, Tom Hanks, Harrison Ford. But to everyone's surprise, there sat John Wayne at number two. The following year, John Wayne was number one. The surprising thing was that by this time, John Wayne had been dead for 15 years and hadn't even made a film in 18 years. Now, almost 25 years later, after the poll began in 1994, Wayne has never dropped out of the top 10 or even pulled lower than number seven. No other film star who's no longer living has ever even appeared in the Harris Poll Top 10. And today's movie stars come and go on the list. So how can a guy like John Wayne be explained? He wasn't remarkably good looking like a Paul Newman or a Mel Gibson. He wasn't smooth and charming like a Cary Grant or a Brad Pitt. Now, he was macho, but so were a lot of other guys, from Kirk Douglas to Steve McQueen, and they never made the list. What made him different? Let's see if we can figure it out. Let's start at the beginning. John Wayne is the only Western star to have a real connection to the Old West. Wayne had a summer job on film sets as a 17-year-old prop boy. It just so happened that the studio had brought in legendary lawman Wyatt Earp as an unpaid consultant for shooting westerns. John Wayne spent time drinking coffee with Earp and they got to be friends. Years later, Wayne said he modeled his walk, talk, and persona after Earp. Ron Howard, who worked with Wayne in his last film, The Shootist, said that Wayne gave him this acting tip. Talk low, talk slow, and don't say too much which sounds like what he may have learned from studying Wyatt Earp. Aside from this, let's look at things that might explain his appeal to an audience not only during his career, but four decades after his death. He was a man's man, and he usually portrayed a rugged individualist. He confronted evil directly with a no-nonsense approach. The punishment was usually swift and unblinking. John Wayne could laugh at himself and his image, as evidence here when he dressed up as a big bunny for a TV sketch. Wayne also wore a toupee from 1948 onward, and he never denied it either. He didn't care for his toupee, and he never wore it in private. He said if he wasn't in show business, he'd get rid of it. But he looked very different without it, and he knew his hair was an important part of his image. He only wore it during filming and interviews. A reporter once asked him if his hair was phony. John Wayne replied, well, it's not phony, it's real hair. Of course, it's not mine, but it's, it's real. He was asked how he'd like to be remembered. And he said the Mexicans have a phrase, when translated mean, he was ugly, strong, and had dignity. John Wayne seemed to be friends with everyone, from the prop guy to the stunt men, from people like Dean Martin, Jimmy Stewart, to Bob Hope. Wayne was an outspoken conservative, but... He never let it stop him from being great friends with people like Kirk Douglas, Gregory Peck, Paul Newman, who were on the other side of the political aisle. Wayne and Newman exchanged letters over the years discussing their different viewpoints. When Kirk Douglas recently celebrated his 100th birthday, one thing he mentioned was that he missed his old friend John Wayne. Even though he was a Republican and I was a Democrat, he said. Douglas has talked in the past about their friendship. I did four movies with John Wayne, he said. We were kind of a strange combination. He was Republican and I was Democrat. We argued all the time. We were two completely different kind of people, but there was a mutual respect. I was much more of a loner. Wayne liked to hunker down with the crew, the stuntmen and the special effects guys. When John Wayne was in the hospital dying of cancer, he exchanged some letters with Douglas. He told Douglas that he had an extra surgery to add a cleft to his chin so he could be like Kirk. Douglas wrote back, Dear John, have you ever noticed I never call you Duke? If I were to use a title, 
it would be no less than King. Love, Kirk. President Jimmy Carter said of John Wayne, he was a symbol of so many of the qualities that made America great, and Elizabeth Taylor said, he gave the whole world the image of what an American should be. It's just like I always said, Jack Nicholson once stated, that John Wayne, an actor, was more important to the mass psyche than any single American president. Someone once said that John Wayne represents the Old Testament God, or a Mount Rushmore face, a bigger-than-life character who simply refuses to fade away. After 40 years of not fading away, I suppose that's true. Whether you're a fan or not, one has to admit that it's quite an amazing fact that to this day, John Wayne still has a hold on America. Well, that's it. So, do you have any other insights as to why John Wayne still pops up as America's favorite movie star, decades after he's been gone? If you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them in the comments section below. If you're looking to watch some of John Wayne's best work, here are five you might want to see. They are Red River, The Quiet Man, The Searchers, often mentioned as the greatest western of all time, True Grit, for which Wayne won an Oscar, and Wayne's last film, The Shootist. <laughs>